Now joined by Antonio Fence, political editor of the Palm Beach Post, a familiar face here on To The Point and throughout the community. Antonio, the gulf on impeachment inquiries and potential government shutdowns between Republicans and Democrats seemingly as wide as it could possibly be. Your take, your perspective for our audience. Well, look, here's the thing. There's a lot to unpack in, in what we just heard. And, um, I, I, and I'm assuming that as this impeachment inquiry, assuming they they actually launch with it, get the votes if they seek the votes and among the Republican caucus in the House that and have proven they actually launch into this, that, you know, we'll, we'll get some of these answers, too. Uh, the, the problem is, first of all, I, you know, I'm not sure I would call Ukraine an unsavory country, but I guess it depends on, on your perspective. I do think, you know, that for viewers out there who are listening to this and thinking, OK, you know, you got one group says there's absolutely no evidence. There's another group that says, yes, we, we, we have, you know, we're, we're chasing this evidence. And I, I would say this, you know, pay attention, follow this closely. I do recall, however, that hearing all these absolutely rock hard evidence and allegations that were just completely uncontrovertible about election fraud in 2020. And, and it turns out that really there wasn't any widespread election fraud. That, Mr. Trump lost the election. So I think that the danger here for Republicans, and I think one of the reasons why there is resistance within the Republican caucus mm -hmm. to launching this impeachment inquiry and start walking down that plank, is that, you know, it's the, uh, the boy that cried wolf syndrome, that, you know, if, if, if we're going to go down this plank, we, we better have something really to start with. And, you know, you, you just heard the congressman talk a lot about, you know, these nine shell companies and where the money was distributed and uh you know when you start going into shell companies and follow the money and so forth it starts you know people's attention unless you really have something a smoking gun it, it, they're going to lose people's attention very quickly and and we do know that in the past uh you know impeachments have not been very popular with the american public Antonio, I want to switch to Florida politics. Uh, COVID politics uh, raising its head again. You had this week the Surgeon General, Dr. Joseph Latipo, uh, an, a vaccine skeptic, suggesting and saying and recommending people under 65 not get the vaccine. Uh, the governor saying we won't be guinea pigs or make Floridians guinea pigs. You have federal officials saying no MD should be saying that. Uh, once again, front and center as, as we see the new COVID booster coming out, your sense of that uh, issue, that moment, and what it says. I, I think, quite frankly, most people watching this have, have, have moved on from COVID. In fact, we've had a major spike in the last few months, and but hospitalizations have been minimal. There's not been a lot of evidence of serious illness. And I think that I think most people see this illness now as a flu or a cold. Uh, many people have had it and have had basically flu and cold symptoms. And I, so I think the public in general is, is really kind of tuned out. This is kind of an inside baseball we politics <laughs> thing. Um, I mean, I, look, I, I think that guidance for people in certain ages who've got, you know, um, the pre-existing conditions as we've known from the beginning, yeah, they should take the vaccine. But I just don't see the, Amer the, the, the public in Florida ready to throw down another fight over COVID vaccines. I think most people have moved on. We've got about 30 seconds left. We'll do your Finns finale early on this particular broadcast. What do you want people to take away as a marker to be thinking about in the coming weeks? Well, you know, they say that one is the loneliest number, but in Capitol Hill, it can also be a very powerful number. We just talked about the whole impeachment inquiry. Part of that was this fight between Florida Congressman Matt Gates and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, this fight over the impeachment inquiry, over the spending, and the shutdown potentially that the Congressman Mass was just speaking about. And a lot of it has been moved because now in the current rules of the House, the agreement that Kevin McCarthy made, one Congressman can stand up and basically move for a vote to vacate and cause the Speaker his position. So yeah, one may be a lonely number, man, but it's really powerful on Capitol Hill. As always, a thoughtful, incisive voice, Antonio Fenz, longtime political editor, Palm Beach Post. We always appreciate your time.